Awesome. Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, actually, before I get started, I want to say thank you to Jackson. Uh, amazing event. Uh, this venue is beautiful as well, too. So I think it's being uh, very well done. Okay, so today um, I'm going to be talking about automated code base migrations. Um, again, my name is Eric Rao. I'm the founder and CEO of Second. And if you want to check out the website, it's www.second.dev. If you haven't heard of Second yet, uh, we essentially cross your engineering backlogs using AI. And so let's go ahead and get started. Uh, actually, one quick question. I assume most of you are developers, but um, would you guys mind raising your hands? How many developers do we have here today? Most developers, OK. How many people uh, became developers so that you could do code-based migrations, code-based maintenance, and upgrades? Anyone? It's kind of a scam, right? Like a lot of people go to college, they learn how to, how to build awesome software, they join a large company, and then they have to spend all of their time doing migrations, upgrades, code-based maintenance. Nobody wants to do that. Uh, we believe that human, uh, humans become engineers because they want to build awesome stuff. They want to build you know, amazing software. So the foundation of our company is based on that, that premise. We want to eliminate all of the distractions all of the grunt work that you need to do, like migrations, maintenance, um, test generation, those types of things to allow the humans to really focus on what they want to do most, which is building awesome software and innovating. So the agenda for this talk is I want to talk a little bit about our vision. Um, I'll speak real briefly about LLMs and agents. Um, I'm going to talk about modules. So modules is a special concept uh, for Second, which makes us pretty unique. Uh, I'll touch on uh, enterprise security, talk about our roadmap, and the fun part at the end is I will do a dangerous demo. Uh, dangerous for two reasons. Um, it's an AI demo, so very uh, dangerous in its, nature, in its nature because things can go wrong, as you've seen with AI agents before. And also for us, we actually just recently rebuilt um, our agent infrastructure. So I'm going to show you uh, something that uh, no one else has seen before. It's a beta of our new uh, agent architecture. And I think it should be pretty fun. OK, so our vision. So our vision is to lead the AI revolution for software engineering teams, automating all grunt work tasks with AI. Um, for, the talk, for this talk, you know, obviously, we're going to be talking about code-based migrations. That's where we're starting. Uh, we think that's a really easy uh, starting point. It's something that's fairly well-defined for specific migrations. And it's something that we think we can do pretty well. About LLMs, um, in our view, uh, 2023 was the year of the LLM. Obviously, AI and ML has been around for years and years and years. But last year, we saw an explosion of new emerging startups focused on building new LLMs, fine-tuning, creating new ways uh, um, to handle RAG, prompt engineering, lots of observability tools an explosion of open source um, LLMs for text, video, and audio. It's been a pretty amazing year. But what you'll see in 2024, we believe this is the year of the AI agent. That is because an LLM, when you think about it, it's really just like a brain. A brain is pretty interesting. You can have a conversation with a brain. You can use a brain to, to create some things. But really, every brain needs a body. Uh, and with a body, these LLMs can not only make decisions, but take action on the world and, and do things. We've seen a few examples of that uh, today. I think Respell uh, was one good example. OK, so earlier I mentioned modules. Um, so for us, uh, a module is an encapsulation of a specific migration. So we've been building AI agents. Uh, our company, we've been building AI agents for about a year. Um, we found that if you're building a completely generic agent, you're going to get pretty wild results at the end. They're fairly unreliable. Um, and oftentimes, if you're relying on the agents to make all of the decisions, um, it's very, um, you're going to get very different results as well. So it's not that useful for production quality code. So all AI agents, we believe, need some sort of guardrails. Uh, a lot of companies 
uh, build guardrails in different ways. Um, for us, our guardrails are modules. So uh, think about uh, a migration like AngularJS to React, for example. For us, that module includes a, a predefined plan uh, that's well tested against the, the, uh, the tools that we built for that plan. Um, these modules will also ship with context. Uh, so obviously, um, with RAG, we want to pull in as much context as we can so that the LLMs understand the latest and greatest of React. And also, we need to provide a lot of examples for how to do a migration uh, from AngularJS to React. Um, and at the end, I'll show you guys what this looks like. Um, I wanted to touch on uh, security real quickly. Um, our company is very focused on serving the enterprise type of uh, use case. Um, as you can imagine, as your code base becomes larger and larger, um, this code base maintenance problem becomes bigger and bigger. So like, that's really the best way for us to provide a lot of value. For enterprises, the, the number one thing that's most important to them is security. Um, so that's why for this company, um, security is the most important aspect for us as well. Our North Star is number one, security, and number two, PR equality. So from a security perspective, um, our customers expect uh, dedicated tenants. So virtually on-premise, but we manage uh, the VPCs for them. Uh, so if there's anyone here um, working at a large enterprise company and you're interested um, in adopting AI or trying out some AI capabilities at your company, please come talk to me. Um, but within these VPCs, all of your data, all of your context, um, your own instance of the application, it's all isolated and completely um, isolated from other, other customers. Obviously, in addition to SSO um, and SSL, um, these VPCs are restricted to the, uh, your VPN as well. Obviously, SOC 2 Type 2 compliance, that's table stakes. Uh, one question we get a lot is like, people ask, do you guys store our code bases? Do you train the code bases? Because that would be a non-starter for most companies. Uh, the answer is no, we don't store code. We do not train on uh, customer uh, code bases. In fact, um, whenever, we, whenever we run a module, we actually pull, get, uh, pull the code base down, do the transformation, do a git push, and then we wipe disk. Um, so we never, um, we never persist the code bases. Uh, real briefly about our roadmap before we get to that dangerous demo. Uh, we have an upcoming launch coming soon. I'm not going to tell you the exact date, but it's coming very, very soon. Um, for us, uh, our primitives are tools and modules. So essentially, we're going to um, really hit the gas and build a lot more modules, a lot more tools, um, and then also work on self-healing code. Uh, today, when we generate pull requests, we do a little bit of static analysis to make sure the code should be compilable. Um, but obviously, it would be ideal if we also ensure, like within the sandbox, that the, uh, the migrated application can compile and even run. Um, and if we detect errors, um, we could actually do some self-healing um, on, on that code as well. Before I show the demo, I just want to mention, quick plug, we are hiring. Uh, we're looking for people obsessed with AI agents, um, hackers of all, all kind. Um, come look for me. Uh, look for the two circles. Uh, Wei Run is here as well, over here. Uh, you can also email me at eric at second.dev or find me on Twitter at Eric D. Rowell. And so with that, let's try to do a demo real quick. I'm going to sign in. Um, I'm also doing this locally because our latest version of the agents is not in production. OK, so uh, whenever a user logs into our system, we think about these code transformations in terms of a project. So we're not trying to invent any new workflows. We know that engineering teams think of these things as a, like an ongoing project, something that takes a lot of time. You get multiple engineers involved. So typically what happens is uh, the engineers start raising the flag that, hey, we need to migrate AngularJS to React, or hey, like. Uh, the Enzyme uh, framework we're using isn't great. We should move to RTL. That project gets planned, and then you'll end up creating a, a feature branch around that project 
do a lot of work, and then every, once everything is done, tested and qualified, you push that into the, the main branch. So we've done that here as well. Um, I'm gonna show you what it looks like to create a project. Um, I'm not gonna take it all the way through, but I'll give you a sense. Our definition of a project is um, an account. So we connect to GitHub or Bitbucket. And I'm testing the Wi-Fi here to make sure that we can pull down GitHub, okay. So this is my account. I'm gonna choose that account. Um, you could choose one of your uh, repositories, select a branch so that you can, obviously you should work off of main or master, you should create a, a feature branch for this. So you can either create one or select an existing one. Um, the next step here would be to hit scan code base. Uh, when I hit that, it would actually pull down the code base and run some agents to do a scan to get more information about that project. Uh, that takes a few minutes, so I'm actually going to just jump over to a, a live demo of running, uh, running one of these projects. So let's head on. So on the left, we have workspaces here. Um, I created a project this morning. Uh, this is an Angular uh, JS application. I'm going to show you what it looks like to migrate from Angular JS to React. Uh, before I show you the, the migration, actually, um, I'm going to head over to settings and show you the context. So like I mentioned earlier, um, our modules are pre-packaged with context and vector stores already built. Um, in this case, we have some documentation included. We could include some, uh, some files as well if we needed to. I'm going to head back over here. So whenever you run a module, uh, so this is the beautiful thing. Uh, the, the plans are actually written in natural language. Uh, sort of similar that was mentioned earlier, like um, I think by Matt from Respell. When you think about automations, you really need to sit down and write out all of the steps and like what should happen. Um, that's what we've done here with natural language. Uh, the reason we're doing it in natural language like this is because the, uh, the plans that we've built, they're pre-tested, they're pre-vetted, they work well for most uh, code bases. But there will be cases where people want to like adjust the steps or maybe like add some additional information. Um, and you can do that with natural language here. So what our agents do is they take this plan, they break it up step by step, they identify which tools should be run to execute each of the plans. They work on the code base and then you get a PR at the end. Uh, for this case, I'm going to shorten uh, the plan. So I'm going to run a module that just does um, run create React app. So obviously, like when you're migrating from Angular uh, JS to React, the first thing you want to do is set up your React code base, which we can do here. Once the new React code base is set up, typically people will use the old code base as a reference and start pulling in files and doing migrations that way. Uh, for the full plan here, you would do things like look for the, the, the controllers and services and directives, find the top level Angular templates, uh, extract, extract uh, logic from controllers and like build React components, that kind of thing. But in this case, we're just gonna create a React app. I'm gonna show you an example of a, uh, a multi-level chaining. So the AI agent will understand, okay, I need to find the Angular JS, uh, the main AngularJS index file. Once I found that file, I need to use a tool to copy the file over to um, a source directory. Then I want to convert the file to a React app component. We have some additional instructions to not include AngularJS elements. And then we'll rename the file at the end. So there's multiple tools being used in this case. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and run this. I give it um, a 75% chance of working. I've noticed there's been a few errors lately, but we'll, we'll see here. So this will take about a couple of minutes. Um, what else can I mention while we're waiting for this? And so one nice thing about our system, um, for each of these jobs that you run, you can see the, uh, the configuration that you used. So if you run a job like in test mode or either in full mode, when you get the PR, um, you might notice some patterns of things you didn't like, like maybe 
Uh, maybe the AI agent chose um, some dependencies that you didn't like, or maybe there was a specific coding pattern that you didn't think was very good. Um, in those cases, you can actually go back here and modify um, the file in natural language and then do a rerun. For our customers who have really large code bases, we always recommend to run things in test mode first. You'll end up getting a, a smaller partial PR. Uh, these PRs can get pretty expensive, especially if, they're, if they've decided to use OpenAI. Uh, they can make hundreds or thousands of calls. So I'm going to cancel that. So we're halfway through here. While this is running, I can show you um, a PR that we ran just before uh, this presentation. So in the end, you know, PR is, is, the, is the gold standard here. So typically, an engineer will run a job. They're going to scan through and look at the PR to make sure that things look correct. Um, today, we're, like I mentioned in the, uh, the roadmap, today we're not doing any self-healing to make sure the application compiles and runs, but we will be doing that later this year in the sandbox. But you can kind of get a gist of, of what happened here. Like here's the top level uh, app.tsx file that was created. And so we, we've seen that as we build more and more tools, so for us, our scale, the way that we're scaling our capabilities is adding more and more tools that specialize in very small, specific code base uh, transformations. And I do want to see if this finishes before we complete. So I think so far the demo has been going pretty good. One nice thing about our system, um, we've set up this concept of, uh, of workspaces. The reason for that is like most companies just use one workspace, but um, for some of the agencies that we're planning to work with soon, they want to set up individual workspaces for each of their clients. I don't know if there's any agencies here, but that would be a great way to really speed up your, uh, your development process if you're doing uh, code-based migrations. OK, this failed. So I need a big aw. <laughs> All right, well, I guess we got unlucky that time. Um, yeah, well, thank you very much. That's the end. I really appreciate you guys and enjoy the, the conference.